welcome. My name is Lynn Larson and I am the Education Director at Repertory Dance Theater. And I, along with my colleague Nick Sandis, we have been teaching at the PE Conference for the last two years um, components of dance in the PE curriculum as well as the fine arts curriculum. And we've been asked to present a webinar this year called Teaching PE Dance Standards Using Creative Movement. And this idea came from the comments of many of the teachers we worked with last summer and also throughout the year. And they wanted to know more about teaching the dance parts of the PE core. And also teachers wanted to know more about using dance and movement in their classroom to help the students learn kinesthetically and also to explore core subjects using dance. Because dance is part of PE Core as well as Fine Arts Core, we're attempting in this webinar to provide guidance in successfully implementing the standards in both curriculums. Dance is made up of locomotor movements, walking, running, galloping, hopping, jumping, leaping, skipping, and non-locomotor movements, twisting, balancing, curling, extending, stretching, reaching, all these words are located in the PE core. Dance is also creative, and this is important today, as I've been told many times this school year by numerous teachers that their students are having a harder and harder time being creative and thinking outside the box. So all of these tools we are giving you today will be a great way to use their 21st century career ready skills, such as creative problem solving teamwork, collaboration, cooperating in a group, making decisions together, and having confidence, confidence in their own ideas or actions. Giving students choices can provide tremendous amount of creativity and also some chaos, and that's okay. We hope that providing you with these tools and some swag this year, you're going to get some things in your swag bag this year will help you with all of these things that we are providing with you. One is a drum. And you will also be getting a set of word cards that will um, that are featured in many of the movement games that I'm going to give you today. So hopefully these will all help you to not only be creative but to successfully accomplish the PE core standards that emphasize dance. So we are going to start right off the bat with something called direction. Very simple, forward, moving sideways, and moving backwards. This is in the PE core, but we also use it in the dance core. And all movement feels and looks different when you experience in ways that are not the norm. So for example, if I asked you to skip sideways or gallop backwards, these are complete out of body experience for some students. They look at me like, what are you asking me to do? They've never thought about doing the movement this way and it feels awkward as they try it out for the first time. And some people really have to think about how to accomplish such a familiar movement in a totally different way. So here are some fun games that highlight both direction and movement and creativity. And note, these games have the capability of becoming a dance just in themselves. So first off, we have something called the change game. So select a locomotor movement, for example, running. Have the students pick a direction themselves. Maybe they're gonna pick forward, maybe they're gonna pick sideways, pick backwards, and you begin either using your drum or putting on some music and have them start. And every time you call out the word change, the student will change the direction they are running. So for example, they might be running forward, you yell out change, and they might decide to run sideways. Or maybe they'll decide to run backwards. Emphasize looking, using their focus, looking over their shoulder so they know they're not going to run into anyone at any time. So they're maintaining not only their personal space, but their operating in general space without running into or touching another person. You can use the word cards that we will give you. Okay, these will you'll get in the swag bag at the conference. You can select an action from the action cards and a direction from the direction cards and pair them together. So for example, you might get forward and then you might get crawl. Put those together and you, the students have to crawl forwards. Or you might get sideways and then gallop. Put those together, the students will have to gallop sideways. You can pair the students up, have them select different actions and directions themselves. They can create a pattern, something that repeats. You can turn some music on, they can perform these as one large group or for one another, keeping their focus on staying with their partner. Using non-locomotor movements, you can pair the students and have them try non-locomotor movements facing different directions. 
Have them try spatially being close together or far apart. What does that look like? What happens when they're all facing different directions while performing a non-locomotor movement, like twisting or reaching? Last but not least, put the locomotor movements and the non-locomotor movements together, and now you have more of a dance. So maybe they start in their non-locomotor twisting idea, and then they go into their forward hopping and sideways rolling and backwards skipping and then they end with a twist non-locomotor movement facing a different facing backwards facing sideways these are all fun games that you can do that deal with direction next we're going to talk about levels levels in space and i'll always like to say not outer space because so many students will say talk start talking about gravity but we are talking about levels in space in the room that they are occupying so the three levels that we have are high, medium, and low. High level is like standing up, or maybe if you jump up into the air, that's all high level. Medium level is like doing a wall sit without the wall supporting you. And a low level is anything on or close to the ground. Movement can feel and look very different on these levels in space. And both locomotor and non-locomotor movements can be performed in these levels. So here are some movement games that highlight levels. We can go back to our first game, which was called Change, which is the same as we did it in Directions, but this time we're going to change level each time the teacher says the word change. So have them pick a level to begin in and an action. Maybe they're going to start walking. And every time you say the word change, they'll change their level. They start walking in a low level, you say change, maybe a student picks high, someone might pick low, someone might pick medium. And for a challenge, you can put that together with direction if you've already done that. Second option, using the word cards, pair an action from the action colors with a level. So for example, you might get kick and low. So the students would have to come up with their own interpretation of what that might mean, of how they might kick in a low place. Another idea is to use the popular internet um, or social media mannequin challenge. Have the students change the shape of their body and their level every time you hit the drum, but then have them hold and freeze in stillness for a matter of seconds, like 10 seconds, 8 seconds, maybe even 30. See if they can hold and not move, but every time you hit the drum they have to change the level that they're at. This is a good challenge because sometimes for them that's very, very difficult. Last but not least, have the students design a shape for their body in each level. One that could be high, one medium, and one low. So for example, they could go back to their non-locomotor ideas. Maybe one shape is twisting, one has a reach in it, maybe one has a bent shape or a straight line or a curve. Pick a different one for each level and then have them transition from one to the next in a slow, continuous motion, like an eight count drum beat or slow music. And so it would be a continuous motion resembling something like Tai Chi, where there's no stopping point. It's all very sustained and continuous. And then for the contrast, for the exact opposite, have them try to move from one to the other in exactly one count. So now the emphasis is very sharp and very staccato, and they're trying to arrive without transitions into their shape. Next, we're going to talk about speed. Slow motion, regular tempo, and very fast movement. The tempo of movement can manipulate locomotor and non-locomotor movements. Having students experience running in slow motion versus running as fast as they can uses different muscles and requires a different focus in their bodies as well as how they relate to the space and one another. Here are some movement games that can highlight speed. We can go back to our change game, and this time use speed. So, every time you say change, they change whether they're running slowly, very fast, or just a regular jog. They could combine level, speed, and direction at the same time, so now they're picking three things. Use your word cards, because you will also have speed Pick an action, pick a speed, gallop fast, run fast, crawl slow. 
divide the gym into thirds. Have the first third be like the slow motion zone, the second third regular, and the third fast. And then give them different actions to do in each one, or the same action, but just make sure that they're obeying the speed limit in each zone as they experience it. They could even make up their own patterns that go through the zones that have direction, level, speed, actions. They could pick from the work cards. And this can also, if you put music to it, become a really interesting dance. Next, we're going to talk about actions, locomotor and non-locomotor movements. In the core standards, we concentrate on very specific movements that are locomotor and non-locomotor. There are many other verbs and action words that we can, can be used alongside these traditional selections that will add to the creativity and fun of the following games. Try using any verbs the students and you can think of swimming, climbing, crawling, rolling, swaying, swinging. Here are some movement games that highlight actions. So going back to our change game, this time you can use actions. And every time you say change, the students should pick a new action to do. And they can use their creativity to be as creative as possible. And if they're not being very creative, take out your action cards from your card pack and you can read some off. And that way that every time you change the action, they can change their direction, their level, their speed, as they will have over 30 choices in your word card game. Movement sentences. Take some of your word cards, select four to six of the action cards randomly. Place them in an order on the board. You could write them on the board or just maybe place them up where the students can see them. So for example, turn, stomp, bend, jog, skip, slide. Place them in that order. And then the students must create something in that order. So one movement for each thing, so they need to create some sort of turn that would lead into a stomp, that would somehow maybe bend, and then start jogging, a skip, and a slide. The students can create um, these alone or in groups, and the movements need to happen in this exact order. The actions can include direction and change in level and speed if you've already covered that, and they can travel across the gym with the first word starting at the first side of the gym and the last word ending at the last side. So their sentence should travel all the way across. Getting to, which you could add to this, the next thing we're going to talk about is pathways. There are three pathways in the core, straight, curved, and zigzagged, or sometimes we call this angled. Pathways are like trails through the space. They trace on the floor where you do the movement. So for example, if you just took our movement sentences, you could draw a very curved pathway on the board and say, your movement sentence needs to follow a curved pathway across the gym. Or maybe they select, maybe they want to do an angled pathway, like a zigzag, that might turn into a spiral that would end with a straight line shooting out to the side. Some other movement games that you can use with pathways are, you can add arm movements that mirror the pathways. So for example, if you're working on curved pathways, have the students trace curved pathways with an action and add curved arm movements with it. Same thing with straight or zigzag, or maybe swap them. So maybe they're doing a zigzag pathway, but their arms need to be curved. So they're having to think creatively and cross the two over. You could also draw a pathway on the board or a big piece of paper and have the students map the room. So maybe you're going to start where um, they enter the gym and there's a straight line and then there's a curving snake pathway that goes all the way down to where the bleachers are and then maybe there's a sharp diagonal straight line and then a zigzag that ends somewhere in the middle of the room and that's their pathway. Then they get to select which actions they're going to do on that pathway Combine with direction, level, and speed, add some music, and you have a dance complete. Next, we are going to talk about isolations. Isolation means moving one body part independently on its own, um, separate from the rest of the body. So for example, just moving the head is an isolation of the head, or just moving the wrist, or just moving the shoulder. There's a very fun warm-up that we do that is called an add-on warm-up. 
that begins at the top of the head and works its way all the way down to the feet. It's a sequential warm-up. The students start experimenting just moving their head in as many different ways as they possibly can and maybe finding something they like. Find someone who you think is moving their head in a creative way or something that looks interesting or something that maybe looks challenging. And then um, have the students do and replicate that exact movement, not a version of what that person's doing, but have them do what that person's doing. So for example, if it was Nick's head, then everyone would copy and match what Nick's head was doing. Then move them down the body. What might the next thing be? Maybe it's the shoulders. Pick another student. I love the way Lynn's shoulders are moving. Let's all match that movement. Then let's go back. Let's do Nick's head and then Lynn's shoulders. Moving down the body. Maybe next time we do the arms. To the torso. Talk about what the torso is. Through the hips, through the legs, through the feet. So pretty much now you have eight different things that are moving. Next, students could take a movement from the action card instead of traditionally doing it, like if we pick kick out, we traditionally do that with just the legs, but maybe this time you say, no, we're going to pick different parts of the body to isolate. So maybe today you're just going to practice kicking with your nose. How could you do that? Or just kick with your elbow. Or maybe we normally walk with our feet. Could we just walk with our fingers? Or maybe we skip. Could we skip? Um, if we were down on the ground, could we skip while we were laying on our back? What would, might that look like? So they're using different body parts to experience actions that maybe traditionally they do with just one. We can also take the body parts in isolations and say, what do they do? What parts of our body circle? What parts of our body bend or rotate? and go through and add just a warm-up or create a really simple circle dance about everything that circles in the body. I would like to talk about the how of the movement, so how we are doing it. There are many things we can use to um, get to the how. One, it could be an adverb, adjective, or using texture um, to really inspire the kids to um, find different describing words that could influence how the movement is done. So very simple game to start with that is really fun is an adverb game, and this is a fun way to warm up, and it's always a a great way to kind of break the ice um, in terms of being creative with the kids, especially the older kids. So what I'd like to do is pick a very simple action like walking and then pick some adverbs that go with it. And I tell the kids that this adverb is not going to change the action you're doing, it's going to change how you're doing it. So if our verb is walking, if I give you an uh, adverb, walking competitively, all of a sudden, I would not see you running because you still should be walking, but I should see the, how the verb or adverb competitively changes how you are walking. So, some simple things. You can walk, run slowly, run awkwardly, walk sneakily, gracefully, slowly, quickly. Those are always fun, but also sometimes it's fun to throw in things like mysteriously or magically I've been using that a lot lately and the kids seem to like really come up with some really fun and creative things or um, or even just something simple like robotically to really change um, each time you say a word to really change what you're going to see emotions are great during this one having them do something sadly or um, excitedly 
more nervously, but without any sound effects coming. So you don't really want them to be acting with their voices. You want to see the, how the word is affecting the movement. Um, another fun thing is the texture game, and this is really fun with fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. And you're going to use your five senses. Um, I never use taste because usually I am in the gym, which many of you probably are, and I know I don't want them licking the floor or anything. So we, I say we're not going to take taste out of it, but we are going to use sight, um, touch, smell, and hearing. And what I, ask, what I do is select four objects in the room, like for example, in this room, we have carpet, we have a cinder block wall, we have a wood table, and we have a very cushioned chair. So those are all things that are different in texture. And I ask the kids, if they're sitting on the floor, to take their hand and feel the carpet, and who can give me some describing words that can come up with what that feels like? And they'll say things like, rough or bumpy or fuzzy and then I say to them what would happen this time instead of doing like a walk slowly what if we walked in a fuzzy way what might that look like or if you had to do a fuzzy jump and they um, come up with all sorts of fun things which is great and then I say the same thing well now use a different sense use your eyesight look at the carpet what does it look like and I see, if I'm looking at this carpet, it looks kind of zigzaggy, it's very linear, um, it looks a little dirty, they love to say that word, but then they have to kind of come up with what that might be when it's paired with an action. So, your game would be to take these four objects, have them with a partner, go around, use one sense for each of the objects, and come up with a describing word. And then once they get back and they have accomplished that, you list four actions. You can pick them from your action cards, or you can pick four that you like. Maybe it's a run, maybe it's a balance, maybe it's a fall, maybe it's a skip. And then you pair. Pair your word that you picked from describing the carpet with the word jump. Pair the word from the cinder block wall with the word fall. Pair your describing word from the cushy chair with the word balance. And then they have to come up with those. Who can name the five senses for me? Very easy, right? Yes, right back there. On um, smell, taste, on um, sight, on oh, I can't remember the other two. Ear, listening, ears, and mouth. Yeah, good. Taste. Okay. We are not tasting today. Taste. Oh. We are not it's going no. to taste today. Sorry. Oh. Okay. We are not tasting. Everybody hear that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. We are going to use hands to touch. We are going to use our sight. We are going to listen. You can smell it too. Okay? So, everybody take your hand, and I want you to feel the floor. Give me some describing words of what it feels like. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Yes, right. Very smooth. Smooth. Dirty. Dusty. Chalky. Is that what you just said? That's a good word. Dusty. Dusty. Rough. Rough. Very good, yes.
So, you're going to have to do a run down and let me kind of make you feel hungry. Don't do it yet! Uh, so, so, let me see if I understand. Yes. So, if they smell the Lemony, yep. then they're going to do a lemon. Did you say run? Do a lemony. They're going to do a lemony run. Oh. Yes. Okay. But I like, touched it and it was rough, so I would do a rough run. Yes, you are right. of a dance where it would have a lot of elements inside of it. Everything basically that we worked on would be put together in some way. You could add music, you could really deal with the space, and, um, and this is something they could perform. Like you could really, um, if you were showing something with a play, or if you had parents coming, or if it was a special assembly at the school. So example one um, is in this formula will be written out for you in the webinar is select three to four actions. Now you could select these for the students or you could have them in small groups. It's groups of three people, groups of four people, or maybe groups of two. Have them select three to four actions. For, for example, run, crawl, hop, and leap. Have them select a direction for each one. Maybe we're gonna run sideways, crawl forward, hop backwards, leap sideways, Make sure they know they can't use the same direction for everything. We are being creative. We are thinking outside the box. To have them not pick the most obvious choice. So for example, if I said run, what is our most obvious choice? Running forward. Okay, maybe we're not going to pick that today. Today maybe we're going to experiment and be a little bit more creative. Maybe we're going to run sideways. Next, have them select a speed for each one. Maybe we're going to run sideways fast. Crawl forward slow hop backwards, maybe at a regular speed, or leap sideways at a regular speed. Select some levels, so it, now we're defining the space a little bit, so not everything's happening at a high level, that's the easiest one. Maybe some things are going to happen close to the ground. Maybe some things are going to happen halfway. Some things are going to be very high in the air. Have them design their own pathway in the space. And then have them select, how is this movement going to be done? Maybe they'll choose to do it in a very silly way, or maybe they're going to be very serious, or I've had a group do something in a very polite way, which was very fun, um, and then add some music. Maybe they pick their own that corresponds to what they've created, and you have a dance. You could also have each of these things happening on stage at the same time, so maybe they enter and exit at different places, and you have a longer dance to a longer piece of music. That's example one. Example two, following the, another formula, have the students in groups again. Maybe you change it up this time. Maybe they're in a little larger group. Maybe they're a group of five. Or maybe if you did larger groups before, you want to try smaller groups. Have them create three shapes. Now, these are going to be non-locomotor. Three shapes in each group. And I always have someone ask me, well, we put ours together. No, you need three separate shapes. Maybe one is curved, one is angular, and one is a very straight, linear shape. Somehow they need to relate to each other. We need to be able to tell they are one group. Maybe they are touching, maybe they're not. Maybe it's just their focus that is really um, bringing them together as a group. And then assign a level to each shape. One is low, one is high, one is medium. And then map these shapes in the room. Where are they going to take place? Maybe one shape happens directly center. Maybe one happens in a corner and one happens directly front. And then how are they going to travel in between these shapes? 
have them select some action, actions to get there from one spot to another. But maybe also they might choose to stay connected while they're traveling. Maybe they choose not to. Maybe there's going to disconnect and do their actions till they arrive in their spot. They'll create their shape, have them hold it for a few seconds so that we as an audience can register that they've created their shape. Add music. Maybe add a few groups at the same time so you see them travel all around. You see their frozen shapes happening in different spots. And maybe at the end, they're all holding their last shape. That's the end of example two. So these are two ways you can take everything we talked about today, put it together to make a longer dance sequence. So I know in the PE core, there are many places that it says in a very simple way, create or design a creative dance. And that seems like a very vague statement, but everything that we have done today and talked about would cover that standard. So hopefully this has helped you and, and maybe opened your mind a little bit onto all of the possibilities that you can use. When you attend the conference in June, Nick and I will go over some of these things in greater detail. We will also teach you how to use your drum. We will do even more games with you that are outside of this will kind of lead to more ideas and we will also cover some games for special needs as well. So those are the things that we will work on in June. Um, you will have to give a special magic word at the end of this um, webinar so that people know that you watched it. So we are going to say that magic word is zigzag. Thank you so much.